Hello and welcome to the Card Subject to Change podcast for the week of May 16th, 2020. I'm Austin. I'm that James dude. And I'm Ed. Hello. Well, hey, hey, at least we got a pattern going now. It's Austin, whatever James wants to say, and I'm Ed. Yep, it basically goes up in Discord. I hope you like awkward comedy, because that's me. Anyway. Uh, if they're here, they definitely like awkwardness. <laughs> well, we have a good show for you today. Um, it is a bit later than usual for us, but we'll still rough it out a bit. Um, Anyways, we've got a big show, including a main event picked by Ed, entitled... Uh, Kevin Steen versus El Generico, the fight without honor from Final Battle 2010 ROH. Uh-huh. Big match with a big length. Should be a good one. But we got a bit of a road to get there, including first... the Oh, wait. I'm going to do this every week, aren't I? Ed, James, how are you guys? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. Doing great. Looking forward to watching some great wrestling tonight. How are you? I am good. Anyways, we are on to the pre-show. And with the pre-show, it's been a... It's been a fairly turbulent week for wrestling. Uh, not too many. Well, I mean, there's one particularly bad note that we have here. But starting from the top, um, Ed, do you want to take that one? Sure. Uh, and probably the best vacating speech of a championship in a while. Becky Lynch vacated the Raw Women's Championship because she and Seth are expecting a child. Uh, the man will now be a mother. And due to that, Asuka is now the Raw Women's Champion, completing the Women's Grand Slam in WWE. Yeah. Um, I'm Congratulations to Becky and Seth. Um, Congratulations to Oscar for different reasons, but I think it's great for them because they seem happy and yeah, I look forward to Oscar's title reign. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, it it was certainly it was it, it it was a interesting sort of turning of events. Um, all all blessings of Becky. I know, like. It's an interest. It's certainly an interesting choice. I know some people were just a bit surprised that being at the peak of the career that she was at, that she would take time off to be a mother. But personally, I commend it, and all luck to her in being and being a mom. Also, definitely stir definitely stirred up some big attention for the company. With I think it got a million views in just under six hours from when it was posted on YouTube. Yeah. Makes uh, it less considering all things considering, so Okay, so this was a this is a bit of uns, unscripted. Uh so I just was looking at I as I was looking at uh the next news story. I'm sorry, James, I'm gonna have to I was gonna hand this one off to you, but I have to interrupt it real quickly. I was looking at Twitter and trending right now is Drew Gulak. That being because he was released by WWE. So that's another. That's a what sad the fuck? Yeah. That's, yeah. Weren't they like in the middle of pushing him? Alongside Daniel Bryan, who I thought was really they good. Had a match on, yeah, they had a match on, on Friday that was very good. I mean, what more would you expect from two of the best technical geniuses in wrestling today? But yeah, pro, Ref- pro wrestling sheet has confirmed Drew Gulak has been released from WWE. Man, that's sad. I mean, he what he the was fuck. He's he's great. Um, I've always really liked Drew Gulak. Uh, as a, a 
and like he can do it all. He can be the serious heel. He can be the serious baby face, as we've seen recently. He can also be the goofy heel and baby face. If you remember all the PowerPoint shit. Yes, I love the PowerPoint shit. That was like my. That was like what started so me. Um. Yeah, that's that's sad. And of course, he was formerly Chikara as uh, Fire, as I believe. Like, he was one of the. Ants. I believe he I was Ultra Ant in Chikara. Yeah, I just Fire remember was Orange Cassidy. I just remember, oh yeah, right, yeah, we always joke about that, uh, not on recording, of course. I just remember seeing a really good, a funny segment from Shakara where he came out with a, with a stick and he was blind, so that's why he was leaving. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's very sad. Uh, yeah, our best wi- wishes to Drew Gulak, I mean, we wish he would, like we, like he would ever listen to this show, but. Jesus, that's that's I, that's sad. I, I thought he was going to be one of the safe guys because he seemed to be handpicked by Daniel Bryan to be worked with. I didn't think WWE would fucking do that. What the hell? With that said, I look forward to seeing what he does outside of WWE. Certainly, there's a lot there. I'm looking forward to seeing more uh, Drew Gulak. And um, also. Considering considering what it was timed, it's possible it was a brief. It's like one of those rehire rehirings. Like like they obvi- like they it again they obvi- it seemed like there was a plan for him. Like it might have just come down to economics or something. Even though we know that WWE doesn't isn't su- isn't really suffering there, but yeah, they got plenty of money. They don't need to do this. Totally. Yeah, considering he has Daniel Bryan's blessing, whatever he does outside of the uh, WWE bubble, he is going to do very well for himself. Absolutely, very well. Oh, um, also, it, it seems uh, Sean Ross Sapp has said, uh, "I've been told his contract was coming due or expired, and he chose not to resign." So it looks like it was a choice from him. Interesting choice. That's interesting. Yeah, that's possible. I mean, this literally, this hey. literally just came up, and we found it on Twitter. This yeah. is breaking news. Um, we're saying whatever info we happen to have. There's a good chance it's all wrong. We'll find out. Yeah. Um, uh, shit, we're lagging for Austin, uh, but we do hope whatever comes out of Duke's camp that is positive, and that this wasn't just some fuck you by the company. Uh, same here. Um, I'm looking forward to see how Drew does. Uh, how you doing, Skull? You're back. Uh, we look Sorry, at Austin. Austin. Sorry, wheels. A uh, bit of lagging there. You're fine. Um, I was. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, nonetheless, I was mentioning Sean Rassap said that his contract was coming was coming to or expired, and he chose not to resign. So. Yeah, best of, best of luck to him. That's definitely very interesting. That's for damn sure. We'll be keeping our eye on that. Well, I look forward to seeing more Gulag supplied. Yeah, Gulag. Um, nonetheless, um, continuing with our with our scheduled programming, uh. James has something on CZW. That's a bit. I feel. Off, I feel like there was an easy joke about the card being subject to change that we missed. But <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. So, regardless of the story with CZW, so uh, I'm just like, Lufisto recently came out with a video, and she's been talking about this for a bit. But she had the post of the video that's become a thing earlier this week. And it was pretty much pointing out that CZW has been doing this really gross thing where they're effectively selling their female matches almost as if they're porn. And it's really, just really gross that they're doing that. Um, And I have some of the examples of some of the lines they've been used to sell this. So they've been selling uh, CZW girls with a Z. (laughs) Hair pulling cat fights featuring four nasty cat fights, uh, one of which is Mercedes Martinez versus Lufisto. Um, 
yeah, that's that's a hair pulling cat fight, sure. Uh, like yeah. all these matches, it's they're not that. Like what? <laughs> these are badasses being badasses. Why are they fucking selling these people like this? Like for an SK, and that's that's not the worst of it either. We also have CCW girls, top heavy and tough. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yeah, um, this is just absolutely disgusting about this company. It's certainly, and like, I'm not I, okay. So I watched a Dare documentary on CZW Tournament of Death. Um, knowing what, and I'm not sure how much they've changed since then. I believe it was 2013 or 2014, but all of it was being run out of like one guy's, one guy's house, like kind of ECW, kind of like. Early days of ECW, like he he's just pr- he just prints these DVDs and ships them out of his house. I, I I mean obviously I think as they've grown they've probably changed that a bit, but it's really just it's so stupid that something like this would happen and like come on this is this isn't what wrestling female you know, what women re- women's wrestling is about it's about the fact that the, that every woman in the ring is pro- is a is Definitely a ba- like a badass who could definitely kick. Yeah, any that's bar. the poison part. These are excellent badass matches that are being sold like this. Like, by the way, mm-hmm. I have another one here: CZW girls, hot and sweaty, featuring three sizzling matches. Yeah, they're getting worse as I go here. Yes, um, they are. I've oh, got fuck off. CZW girls, all assets revealed. Jesus. I've got, I've got two right here. So this is a reply to uh, Lou Fisto's original treat, tweet from Shiver Wrestling. The company doing this offered to put our footage on pay-per-view, and we declined due to our history of repackaging other shows with titles like In-Ring Sex Play and Nude War Games. When we declined, they gave us the option of not marketing our footage that way. We still said no. Good for Shimmer. Thank you, Shimmer. Thank Just you, Shimmer. Stupid. Just, like, well, uh, like, let me be one thing clear. If you made porn with people that are comfortable making porn, and then you sold it as porn, that's fine. But this is not porn, so don't fucking sell it as porn. <laughs> like, do, how do you think? You're, like, this is this is you're you have a following of pro wrestling fans who declare themselves as pro wrestling fans, like, and you're like a a big alternative of that. People who come to you are, are probably looking for pro wrestling. Why are you selling this as porn? It's probably not going to even sell as well. No, no, it's not. It's, it's Hopefully, though, not. then again, there are enough creeps that I wish I could be as confident as you are in that one. But <laughs> Yeah, the internet's uh, definitely full of people that are not nice. Yeah. Wigs out the worst and best of us. Nonetheless, getting off of that disgusting story, um, we had news today, or not today, Wednesday, from NXT, from a from Shawn Michaels and Triple H, who were sitting in production. That I also think Road Dog was there, too. Road Dog was there, too. No, you didn't no. know. Damn it, you better call somebody. I said it wrong. You better call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> that was a horrible world dog impression, everybody. I know you came here to hear that. Anyway, the next NXT tape takeover will be in James's house. My house. And Austin's house. And your oh. house. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's in your house. So they're bringing back the in your house brand. Um, certainly, uh, certainly. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's certainly just mainly nostalgia, but it, it's very well timed. It's it perfectly fits the current situation. All I know is they better bust out the the big house just for the stage setup. And Come they on, just need, they just need to break out custom stages for every pay per view again. Yeah, they, they must have that house in storage somewhere. James, you can't be you can't be that hopeful. Oh no, I don't think it's gonna happen, but they should. <laughs> they should, yes. Yeah, it should be. I mean, it'll 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 probably be a good show. I mean, NXT takeovers are always are. This is just a bit of an extra buzz 
to add on to it. Definitely looking forward to it. Takeover is always fun, like you said. So I felt I felt like I saw WWE reprinting in your house shirts a, a, a while back, a bit before this. They were uh, doing it with uh, Mania. They had a oh. sign oh. for Mania because they were kind of using the same joke. Yeah, just the merch. <laughs> you will probably be running this joke into the ground. I reckon by next pay review, everyone will be sick and tired of it, and the nostalgia will be wiped away from it. And I also think they were selling WrestleMania shirts that said "I wasn't there." Um, well, I, I we know bad. which one of us is the most pessimistic about. WWE, so he got uh, that brief outrage from Ed. Whoops. <laughs> oh no, I have I well I have pessimism in general. Oh I don't doubt to be entertained by things. <laughs> 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 He's not wrong though. I do think they will probably run the joke into the ground. If 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 COVID nineteen gives them the chance, they certainly would. I mean, they have released wrestlers when they didn't need to. Case in point, the but, uh, breaking news story we mentioned earlier in the podcast. Well, he said it said he was. It said he was re- He was up to. He was coming up to the expiration of his contract, and he decided to resign. Obviously, nonetheless, uh, Gulak is a bad example. Considering we know nothing currently, this was only posted an hour ago, but it does bring back yeah. the memory of that dreaded. Wednesday? Was it Wednesday that Dark Wednesday that all 20 plus people got released? Whatever day it was, that really was dark day week. Black Wednesday? Something like that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, all the Wednesdays that there's wrestling nowadays. I know, Wednesday is not a hot day for some reason. We're at the smack dab middle of the week. But speaking of Wednesday, uh, Kenny Omega is trying to become Kenny Omega again. And I mean the Kenny Omega that has six, seven star matches. Wow. Yeah. It appears that in a recent interview, he's mentioned that he wanted to build up the character slowly as well as make a big deal out of making uh, other people look very good, which I think he's done a pretty good job of. Certainly. But one thing that has been missing is he hasn't felt quite as much like the star he did in New Japan, though he doesn't. He's still entertaining, obviously, and he has been made in the comment that uh, I think the specific line here is, "When it's time, which is sooner than people think, I'll remind people why I'm the best in the world." And it's coming. It's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. I mean, he was in the arguably greatest tag match ever, so I don't know what people are doubting. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, I, uh, I would like, also... Even conversations we've had about, like, who should be among the next AEW champions. We've been sleeping on Kenny. Like, let's we've, like, on it. we've definitely wanted I the did. younger talent to take take hold, as well as to stay away from the bigger names that have come out of the WWE camp, i.e. Jericho and Moxley. Uh, as great as they are, I'm happy with them as champions. I just... They gotta yeah. make their own identity clear sooner or later. And when it comes yeah. to their champions, that's obviously hard there. to hard to steer away from people being somewhat identified with the WWE bubble, given how large it is. I mean, even MJF tried out for Tough Enough at one point, never made it, but tried out for WWE nonetheless. Jeez, was that was how long ago was that? I, I keep I keep seeing uh, a profile on my suggested. I mean, it can't be that long ago. He's like, what, 22? Yeah, really, probably yeah, four years. That, 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 see, that's what I was thinking. Uh, At the time, going by Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. Uh, so 2015, April 28th, that video was posted to the WWE YouTube channel. Yeah, so that's five years ago. If he's 22, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he, w- he would have been 17. He's probably He was probably younger than me at that point. Uh, that he actually would have been trying out for the final season of Tough Enough, actually. I know I looked yeah. that up earlier, James, when we were just bullshitting around, yeah. but I did not click, I did not register the date. Yeah. So I will say, the thing about WWE and Tough Enough is 
even if they did have a talent like MJF on there, he wouldn't have won. He probably would have gotten kicked off like on the third episode of something because that's fucking what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're if you look at the history. <laughs> Someone's still cross about Matt Cross being kicked off early. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> that was also in the conversation earlier between James and I when we were just bullshitting by ourselves. What top enough? <laughs> yeah, right. I know, you do I know, know what, what tough enough is, right? I know what tough enough is, okay, guys. I I know what tough enough is. I okay, just, we were about to question you there. Yeah, I'm, I'm a I'm a younger fan, so <laughs> joke, joking, joking. But yeah, who I the, certainly who the hell is Hoovy? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly think that uh, getting back to the topic at hand, I think Kenny. I, I I have no doubt that he's still he's still one of the best wrestlers in the world if he really when he tries. Um, I think his portrayal of AEW has been a bit interesting because he's had very good matches. He's had some of the best AEW matches, but he hasn't been at his highest, and he hasn't been at his highest. I I certainly think um, I think like Young Bucks. And young Bucks have kind of outworked and outworked work raking him somewhat. Um, and the, what I'm trying to get to here is he's been like promoted every time he comes out on commentary as one of the best in the world, and he is. I just don't know if his AEW showing has really proven that, and I wonder kind of like what people who just watch Dynamite think of and don't know about his previous work, think of that. I don't know. It's I will say, oh. as someone who has watched very little New Japan, I have no idea what his character is, besides just Kenny Omega, good wrestler. He was kind of full. Not, of not his character. character. He's kind of geeky. Yeah, he does. Yeah, not, not, not necessarily his character, more his, like, work rate. Like, Which has still been fine, but I can see where everyone's like, this is not the Omega versus Okada Omega that we should be seeing. He's not that guy right now. But he's still damn good. Yeah. yeah. To give the character in general is a man that seems to be constantly either sort of figuring himself or falling back into an identity crisis at pretty much all times. Um, so he'll probably snap to some degree soon enough. And that's when we're. Uh, well, if yeah, his it'll character will probably is, get interesting. If his character is someone who doesn't even know who they are themselves, that would explain why I have no idea who they are. So he well, can have a pass. He, he's trying to figure himself out. I think that's yeah. kind of like the core of what's been happening in AEW. Well, not not really. I feel like kind of in between, uh, toward, towards the latter end of his New Japan run, he was kind of, he's he was finally finding himself with the reunion of the Golden Lovers. And, uh, and arguably the biggest moment was when he finally won the IWGB title. That's kind of when yeah. he defined who he was. Um, I feel like in AEW, the story has kind of been he's he's the dad of the elite. Like yeah, that's Cody, definitely, yeah. Cody does all his stuff and his uh, his uh, truck and stuff and being somewhat childish, really. But uh, Just the Bucks being far more childish. <laughs> uh, <Paige> being <laughs> character <alcoholic. laughs> But nonetheless, he's he's the even though he uh he still plays like Chippendale Rescue Rangers with freaking Michael Nakazawa, he's still the dad of the elite. He's the guy who kind of brings them all together. I think that's been kind of interesting too to see the development of this new tag team with quarantine of Matt Hardy and him, because like Matt Hardy is a total wild card, but he also isn't. Uh, chi- isn't childish and like like the rest of the elite. So, yeah, I am very curious of how the elite and inner circle storyline is going to go between blood and guts or war games and whatever. The well, we have the stadium stampede match. Yeah, now. I was trying to remember the name of the sta- stadium stampede match. We got that first, apparently. I think they want to save Which... blood, blood and guts for actual people in the sta- stadium to watch it. If I remember correctly, that was announced for Double or Nothing coming up, right? Uh, the stadium match, yes. Blood and Guts has been postponed. Indefinitely. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't Cody have a match that night? Oh. Now featuring 
Oh, yeah, he does. Co the, TNT, now featuring the TNT title yeah, is going to be unlocked. Uh, now well, featuring that's that's because they'll probably just have both bucks back, and so it'll be both bucks instead of Cody. Yeah, but it seemed like it was going to be it, se it seemed like it was going to be a faction match, like because Jericho came out with the rest of the inner circle and he challenged he challenged not the Bucks the Elite, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. I put no, up, my point being, right. if you remember Blood and Guts, Matt Hardy was effectively the replacement for one of the Bucks that was supposed to be injured. Uh, okay. I think they're going to have I, one of the Bucks back, and Cody will have his match. Yeah, I have the card oh, up. It's, it's going. Five. I, I have the card up. It's Cody versus Lance Archer for the TNT title inaugural, and then the Stadium Stampede. It's uh, yep, the entire Inner Circle versus the Elite, Page, Omega, both. Bucks and Hardy, so yeah. Now Hardy huh. Hardy is subbing for Cody. Also, that TNT title match now featuring Mister Iron Mike Tyson as the presenter. Present the title, no. As far uh -huh. as we know, currently. Sorry, and with that hell of a tangent, I think we should move on to the the card. I can't agree more, James. Let's watch some freaking wrestling. Would you get them in mind if I use the edition before we start? I know we're recording, but I, we have about another hour before we get into anything else. Sure, French Ed. Like a wee wee. I don't know why I turned French. <laughs> Go have your wee wee. We'll uh, we'll fill time. So James, how about those sports? Oh shit. <laughs> uh, hey, we can't, we can't, we can't be quiet. We the show must go on. Yeah, what do you think of the uh, Sting rumors? Sting, uh, I've heard Sting and Rey Mysterio rumors. I, I mean, we we kind of know. I I mean, okay, so here, so we know that. AEW hasn't really been using legends as wrestlers, but as mentors. Obviously, Sting couldn't wrestle in the ring either, so that makes sense. Um, I I felt really good about their approach with legends. Um, one thing to certainly, we were talking about Sting real quick. Uh, one thing to consider is we've had these uh Taz vignettes with Darby Allen that haven't really been going anywhere. Taz kind of. Seems like he's trying to be a mentor to Darby, but is also doing a really bad job of it. <laughs> At the same time, we we've heard a uh, commentary calling. I, I think it started with Cody, so this might just kind of be an offhand thing. We don't know if it's like officially what the company's been pushing, but they've been pushing uh, uh, Darby as the as a Sting like figure, which I I don't know if I agree with that at all, really, but. If not yet, if Sting were to come to WWE, like I mean, I think well, they were I mean, more. They together. both have face paint. They both have face paint. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I kind of dark. I, I really can't appreciate. I really don't get that comparison. But if it's something that AEW was pushing, or it, it might just be something that Jr. was pushing or Cody was pushing, but if that was something they were pushing, that's where I would say Sting. Um, I'd like to see Darby versus Sting. Just do it. <laughs> I will say, I You'd like, everyone would like to see anyone versus Sting. At this well, you know why Darby yeah. versus Sting would work? Because Sting wouldn't have to do any dangerous shit because Darby would do it all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sting would be fine. I do like the Taz and Darby vignettes, though I don't know where they're going, though. I will say that. They've been very entertaining. I just don't know what the end game is. Yeah. Okay. Now that Ed is back, it's time for the opener. The oh, for following, thinking, by the, way. the right. following match is set for one fall. One, one fall. fall. Fall, 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 fall. And it is for the Wrestle Circus Sideshow title. Um, this is from Wrestle Circus Encore, May 12, 2019, and in Austin, Texas. But I'm chick. Um, and we have a legendary match. This is once again just like uh, the it's like the smash match that I had a few weeks back was what happened when I looked up uh, 
TCO and Brody King. When I looked up Orange Cassidy, this is the match I found. It's Orange Cassidy versus Gentleman Jervis. Orange Cassidy is certainly a notable wrestler, notable wrestler. I feel like everyone who's not named Jim Cornette kind of has realized he's a great a great talent in ring and he's got a hell of a personality behind him. Gentleman Jervis is the is a very fun wrestler. I I, I love Gentleman Jervis. He's he both seems to be and seems to be outside the ring and inside the ring. One of the nicest guys. The world's sweetest man. He is the world's sweetest man. The the, the formerly biggest, known as Jervis Cottonbelly. The per, the the world's largest purveyor of gentle mania. Well then, Ed, because because you are because you have a bit of a reputation to uphold, how much do you know about Gentleman Jervis? Very little. I've only seen the one clip of him trying to be Sean Spears' uh, tag partner. Yep. You should you should make that your catchphrase, Ed. I know literally nothing. <laughs> I mean, he's he's big enough to have a spot on the squared circle banner. So he he's a internet darling, if you will. I don't watch the indies too much. That's why I generally uh, try to find indie stuff to watch because I generally don't know what the hell it is half the time. All right. So without any further ado, it feels like we've been talking for a long time and had very little wrestling to watch. We will get started. The uh, link it should be in the description. In three, two, one. Well, the ring's a mess. Yep. Whatever happened before this, so oh boy. I'm hearing chants of "fuck you, Austin." Are they hating oh, on? Oh, okay, the- so Austin Austin was an evil ref who uh, Jervis later had a feud with. <laughs> Ringmaster, that's what I meant. Oh no, sideshow! This is the sideshow title. <laughs> when a double champion doesn't show up to your show. <laughs> wow. If I remember correctly, Brian Cage signed to, signed to Impact. I believe that's why he left. Why he can't be here. <laughs> It's very believable. No, the one after this. <laughs> Just imagining what would have happened if the crowd said no. <laughs> one fall. Oh. What he said. For a, si- for a side belt, that's not that's not that bad. Since we we were talking about championship sides last episode, not bad. It is a very beautiful title. It's a nice belt. It's a nice belt. Of course, I have hiccups now. I am going to guess this light piano music is Gentleman Jervis. <laughs> nope, you would be wrong. Well. Were you expecting the best friends theme? There, there is only one song that can accompany Gentleman Jervis walking through the ring. Me, 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 and James know what we're talking. What, what that song is? Yeah, it'll make sense in a second. <laughs> Sauntering okay. to the I, ring, I, I like. (laughs) 
<laughs> I fucking love Orange Cassidy. I love I love that announcement. The man who is always doing something. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the guy in the crowd who had a shirt out of who who had an Orange Cassidy shirt. Oh my gosh, she tried to catch the cat the castle over there. With low effort. <laughs> Here we go. Only one song could accompany could accompany <laughs> Java Juris. <laughs> Which you probably can't hear over the crowd, but it's Mr. Brightside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a hugger. No, no, not, not, not me. Damn not it. Me. <laughs> okay, but hear me out. Bailey versus Gemma Jervis for the title of best yeah. hugger in the world. Probably have a W in this. I mean, I saw one match with him where he made his entrance handing out roses. <laughs> that That's very on brand. Though he does kind of look like the peanut mascot. Yeah, just a tad. Brand. Just a tad. <laughs> and you can tell he's over because he's getting all the streamers. Who can't love Gentleman Jervis? This is just, uh, who does the crowd love more probably. match? I mean, I'm going to be honest, considering those streamers, I think it's Jervis. Well, yeah. my feeling, I, 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 I think the crowd's feelings about uh, Orange Cassidy could be best summed up as It's a joke that you're not going to finish your statement, or are you just going to take your time with it? I, I said eh. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, you were very quiet in your eh. Sorry. Well, that that was on brand too. Yes, it was. <laughs> Accidentally on brand. I also, I also because because this is a podcast, I was doing a thumbs up motion. Uh, back out the globe because you know that's nobody could that. That's how that's how podcasts work, guys. We are not in the year three thousand yet. I don't think podcasts would ha- would include gestures even in the year three thousand. The podcast. All right. Nonetheless, okay. there's a match that yeah, I just realized Jurassic tights have roses on them. <laughs> Why does he have fur on his front though? He's Jurassic Cotton Belly. Oh. He, he he was Jervis Cotton I I'm not sure why, but that's part of his. Uh, I I think it might just be as simple as Shakara owns the name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, who's supposed to be the heel in this match? I don't think there is one. There isn't one. <laughs> okay. Fresh <laughs> Get some WD forty, Jervis. Uh, oh. He needs WD forty. I'm telling you, that's only to stop things from squeaking. Not really, though. <laughs> It'll loosen them right up. Take <laughs> 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 it into the ears of Orange Cassidy. Yeah, he lost his glasses. <laughs> You fucked up, Chance. (laughs) There we go. Now we're better. Sponsorship. 
Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> James, have you seen this match? No. <laughs> Holy poop. <laughs> Holy poop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That he actually asked them to chill. Yeah, you gotta be wholesome for Jervis. Go, Jervis. <laughs> okay, that was some Looney Tunes shit right there. I, I'm sorry, Looney Tunes poop. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Say this is probably the safest wrestling match I have ever seen. <laughs> good grief. This is some good shit, guys. Good poop. Uh. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Cue the Jim Cornette rolling in his grave. Yes. He's not dead. <laughs> he, 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 he was after the first 30 seconds of this match, James. Oh, right. That makes sense. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never say Jervis could himself. Holy poop. Oh. I his glasses clean off. We got him for good this time. No, the cameraman put him back on the ring. Well, no, they were on the ring already. He just moved him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy the commentary. Drop down. Drop down. <laughs> I, like, I like the knee. Just putting his knee up a little bit. <laughs> Inside oh. package. It's Orange Cassidy's finisher. <laughs> this is wrestling. <laughs> That is a game. <laughs> His natural habitat. Oh, 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 Jervis, you're killing them, I say, you're killing them. Oh, he's got him. He's got him up for its finisher, one of its finishers. Sleeper hold. <laughs> this is one of Jervis's finishers. I like how commentary gets quiet in, in, in time with it. Shouldn't the ref be kind of loud when he's counting? <laughs> That's my only complaint here. Shouldn't he be loud? <laughs> no, the ref, the refs, the refs participating in this. But it feels like the he understands the gravity of the situation. Oh. At least he did it to both of them. That's fine. This is amazing.
Um, but to get him. Very uncharacteristic of Jervis to be looking outside under the rig for something. Oh, okay, that's very wholesome. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't expect anything less from Jeremy Jervis. Tiptoes over. <laughs> <laughs> This is such good poop. Thank you. Good night, kiss. <laughs> Why would he need a pillow out of the way? I think that'd be the softest thing they would ever land on. No, well, if, no if, if, seriously, if Jervis stepped on that, he could have slipped and really like fucked up his ankle or something. <laughs> okay, for that, for that reason, yes, that's no, good. It's, for, it's because of this. Well, actually, it would have been orange. I think if I was the one standing in that moment, but by point stands. Oh, the the buddy hop, the buddy hop into the pillow. Buddy hop is one of his finishers. <laughs> that needs to be your get trace for this match. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's it. Wow. Okay. I hope you weren't expecting any other finish to such a to such a least dangerous match. I love the kid. I love the kids cheering for him. That's great. Well, that was a very good match. Yes, it was. That is wrestling. He got clocked with a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> That's very well to be. That was great. So yeah, certainly, I think one of the most unique, yeah, it's one of the most unique matches you'll ever see. Again, a understatement to say the least. That was very enjoyable, though. That was very entertaining, as I would have expected from those two. Uh... I will say that was as much of a match as the uh, Firefly Funhouse match was a match, to be honest. Though just a bit more. Oh. Uh, yeah, I was going to say it's a bit more because. Be quite a lot. I mean, that was yeah. absolutely a comedy match and it did its job. <laughs> Excellent comedy match, to be honest.
Yep. If you ever need to, if you ever need a good comedy match, you can always turn to those two. Can't Did believe it. Guys. Can't believe it, guys. We're starting a show with a title match. That's a, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, you will never see that happen again. It might happen next week or next episode, depending on when we record this. Card subject always to change. And that's, and that's the only. That's the only title match of the show. <laughs> I, I I don't think we can have much higher stakes from here. Really, guys. We're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot here. Well, our next contest. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mid card. <laughs> it's time for the mid card. Our next contest is going to be Matt Riddle versus Mia Yim from Smash Wrestling's The Northern in uh, 2018. And one thing about The Northern is it is a 16 uh, person tournament that is aiming to emulate and while it's not quite on the level of it's still very good it's aiming to emulate stuff like battle of los angeles and super strong style and stuff like that hmm. by just putting on an excellent tournament wrestling show well, um, nice. well the one thing about really tournaments in smash wrestling is that they always end in a four-way an elimination four-way instead of so effectively they have one rest round but that's not what this match is this is a one-on-one -on -one match from earlier in the show between Matt Riddle and Mia Yim. Well, I always appreciate mul uh, tournaments ending in a multi-man. I believe Bola ends in a triple threat, I believe. I believe it. So, yeah, it sh should be a good match. I mean, the, the, names, the names in this match certainly live up to that, bo to that uh, Bola level. Battle of Los Angeles level. Absolutely. Matt Riddle and Mia Yim. Looking forward to this match myself. All right. So, without any further ado, if y'all are ready, you didn't do it. On go. Three. You didn't do it a bit. Oh, no, yeah. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. One Ooh. fall! Yay! I eventually did the bit after being told I didn't do the bit, like, what, three times? Maybe four? And I, <laughs> I did wait for it. That's my bad. This is James's match. He says what happens. Yeah. All right, on go. Three, two, one. Go. That's our favorite guy, Psycho Mike there. Yeah. March 4th, Matt Rail versus Mia Yim. Yeah, this was a first round match. So was she a heel or a face? I think they were both going into this match, baby face. That, that's what I would think, yeah. These these were both names brought in for the show. Neither of them were like regular roster members of Smash Wrestling at this point. Yeah, that's what I would do. And despite the fact that they're both in NXT now, we probably won't get this match again. <laughs> nope. Always, always excited for an NXT wrestling match. Yeah. Also, just want to know, Mia Yim is the uh, is I believe the first female superstar on the show and. We uh, hope to reprimand that in the future with some more women's matches. Absolutely. Apologies there, for me to them soon enough. There's certainly a lot out there to, that we really want to have on this show. I know I have, I, I have a stockpile of women's matches I would like to watch. I'm sure you, I'm sure you guys do too. Yeah, I got that stuff. 
I do want to point out, going back to the match we are currently watching, uh, Matt Riddle's team still sounds very stonerish, even though it doesn't sound like GTA right now. I mean, I mean, it is Matt Riddle. <laughs> I expected nothing less. I would probably, I believe, in it. The stonerish wrestlers. I'd probably put them second to only Rob Van Dam. I'd uh, probably put him above Rob Van Dam. He's got the uh, bro and the NWO style letters on his tights. That's that's cool. Just getting out. Just haven't seen that logo before. That's cool. I don't know why he's checking his hands and his feet. He's <laughs> bare. <laughs> there, thank you, commentator. <laughs> He's not hiding anything under his skin. Just something I have to... Something that's always confused me. Is SPLX, is that just something people put on their tights, or does it have any significance? So it's pronounced suplex. It's uh, mainly a clothing brand, okay. wrestling-themed, and they sponsor certain wrestlers. All right. Suplex. Got it. I knew that. Was, I knew that's what it stood for. So they're, they're, they're a sponsor. That's why. Okay. okay. Like Jimmy John's. Yeah, no. <laughs> we are not sponsored by Suplex or Jimmy Jones. <laughs> but Matt Riddle at the time of this match <laughs> was. was sponsored. Give us Brock Lesnar versus Matt Riddle, you cowards. But actually. Very technical start. I mean, it is Matt Riddle and Mia Yim. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt it. This. Also striking. Both, but I imagine both will come. Jesus, those abs. Uh, abs. abs. They both have great abs. Uh, yeah. He said abs. I, I, I didn't specify. I said abs. I heard abs and I got scared for a second. We, 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 I didn't specify because they both have great ass. Yeah. Also, when you said that, the screen was blatantly on Riddle. So obviously, you were both are in fabulous shape. Uh, yes, both would be a valid answer to that question. <laughs> That's the best abs. Yes. <laughs> that is what we were talking about, Ed. I get that it may sound like something else, but we were talking about abs the whole time. <laughs> With well, that said, is... Matt Riddle does have a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is the longest abs-related conversation I've had, okay? Are you talking about abs, ads, or ass? <laughs> Originally <laughs> abs, so I did point out that Matt Riddle does have a great ass. Now, <laughs> back to the match. <laughs> I mean, tell that's a ref. <sighs> <sighs> Fuck. And he's got to get Did that Twitter you... on there. Branding. I mean, feel free to check out Smash Wrestling. They put on some very good shows. I know James has watched them live, so I was, talking about, I was talking about Riddle's tights. This has been the most confusing match we've ever had. <laughs> I think it's more confusing because we have no idea what we're doing. Certainly we not the match. Hacks. We are still hacks. Anyway. Certainly not the match. This has been a great match so yeah. far. Looks like we're getting into some striking now. Started I, I, out very technical. Does Mia Yim actually have an MMA background? Because I'm starting to question why she's actually trying to out MMA Matt Riddle, who I know it does have the background for it. I don't think so. She is a very good streaker, though. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, it worked. She's got... Head kick. Head kick. Oh, boy! <laughs> Dodges that one. Ow.
Mio's been pretty active in this match. He's been pretty dominant almost. Well, Lula. That was a hell of a kick. It was. Yeah, it was the Haluba oh. kick. Oh, that's a good counter. She just tried to rob Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Wow. Well, she, she successfully robbed Sami Zayn. She didn't successfully rob Kevin Owens. Oh. Oh, jeez. That was... Those were some good suplexes. I don't know what else I would expect from such a man. I, I I wonder if in his contract for uh, suplex that he had to actually perform suplexes in his match. <laughs> I he, certainly that's his quote, he certainly met his quota there. That was an interesting looking Superman punch. I don't know what it was about it. I mean, he didn't use his fist. That was the problem. Well, it's, then it's a flying forearm, but I, I was more getting at, like, kind of like the way he leapfrogged off the ground. Oh, the was that a oh. senton or was that a. Okay. It looks like it could have been a counter almost. So it looks like Yum attempted to roll out of the way, but he still just landed on her side, <laughs> which just made it look that much more vicious. Yes, yes, it did. Jesus, this is brutal. Do not fuck with Matt Riddle. Compared to the last match, Jesus. <laughs> I would have expected Matt Riddle and Mia Young to be stiffer than Jervis and Cassidy. Certainly. Yeah, but wow, this went from 0 to 12 real quick. I don't know about that. It went from 0 to 5 to 6 to 8 to 12. That is still very a very quick pace change. Neil Hook. Good God, Rill, you are a strong buddy. Oh God, oh God. Mia's still holding it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Let's point out if you weren't sure how much Bennett was hated, you may notice the fuck you Bennett shirts in the crowd. Bennett? Kevin Bennett. I'll find a match of his later. He's very hated by the Smash crowd. Like, in a heel way. Oh, <laughs> ah, okay. Not in a King Corbin way, I am assuming. No. The palm strikes. <laughs> oh, fuck that kick. Ow. Oh, the other great kick. Ooh, ow. Jeez. That was kind of a like kick. Oh. Super. I feel like his suplex quota is a little bit higher than you were expecting, Austin. Well, he filled it before. Now he's exceeding it. That's that's my point. And I'm guessing he might get some bonus money per per extra suplex, maybe an extra twenty bucks. I I thought I think I saw, uh, I think I saw a, bru a bruise or worse on uh, Mia Yim's torso. I could not tell you where it was from because there's just been so much of it, so much striking in this match. Yeah, I don't doubt there being a bruise from this type of match. <laughs> Gee. Yeah, I think you mean the bro to sleep into a German suplex. Oh, Jesus. Shit. <laughs> oh, God, those kicks to the back. God. 
I believe that was more of a stop, but yeah, nonetheless, brutal. Riddle's almost been wrestling a heel style with just how striker he is. I mean, obviously, prior information and stuff kind of yeah, kind of wears that away. But me has certainly been a very he is yeah he's heel yeah he's sealing it up a bit now. Though I think he's kind of leaning into the fact that, especially in a fist face face environment, the in an intergender match, the guy's usually the heel by default. Yeah, he's playing up like that. Maybe the guy should not be just wailing on the woman. Of course, just using the stereotype. This is actually really cool. Or just not giving a toss. Uh, yeah, commentary has <sighs> been commentary has been doing a good job with that. Uh, they mentioned yet. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't want him to go easy on her, and neither would he go easy. Would he ever go easy on her? That's good. Sherman Suplex, taste of his own medicine. Oh no! He's hulking up. Sell. I mean... Somebody's spine or jaw. Right to the face, right to the chest, right to the chest, right to the chest again. Ooh. Mia's had yeah. all the cures in this match. <laughs> oh, she she's not true. Package tile driver. I have a feeling we're going to see a lot more of those tonight. One, two. Oh. <laughs> Well, it sounded like you it. genuinely fell for that one. <laughs> this is wrestling, bro. Yes, it is. Oh, it's a very good near fall. What can I say? Yeah, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. <laughs> I'm saying it got you. I, I, yeah, I think we're... Oh, Ed. Part of wrestling is marking out to it. <laughs> Just ignore oh, yeah, everything great. else. This match. Just, just ignore logic. But yeah, I definitely think uh, I definitely think we're going to be seeing more package pile drivers tonight. Yeah, I think that's a safe bet. At least one more. What in the fuck is Riddle trying to do? Mm. Sunset flip. Canadian destroyer. Good God. It almost sunrise. Kind of, Good kind of. God, indeed. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> you! Oh. Oh. Um. Oh. Oh. Ooh. You. He really could have gone with just saying you <laughs> with how much of a Hulk up that was, seriously. <laughs> Jesus. That was a that was a vile looking power bomb. That it was. That was a very great match. Yes, hard hitting as fuck. Got to agree with the crowd on that one. That was awesome. I can't help. I, yeah, I can't agree anymore. I and I, I, I mean, Matt Riddle did a lot of cool shit in this match, but Mia Yim, Jesus, she did great. She did, she did great offense, and she sold the hell out of him. I mean, I'm not sure about selling was required just because of how freaking stiff this match was, but. Jesus. I do believe in round two of this tournament, Matt Riddle took on Kimberly. <laughs> Good job. Oh, <laughs> boy. Which was yeah, also was... great. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, we're two matches in. We've got we've got a main event that's about the same length as both of these matches. I feel like this might be one of our best shows ever. 
it's definitely going to be our longest effort considering the pre-show we had. And it's our and we started it late. Yay! Anyway, we're five we're five episodes in. This is but this is one hell of a show. I'm right. Absolutely. Bro, bro. Speaking of which, uh, forgot to mention it. This is a weird place to mention it, but this episode is entitled "Fight with and without honor." Bro. Bro. And we'll be getting bro. to that without honor match next. In our, but first, yeah, that was a hell of a match. Damn right, it was very aggressive. Hard strikes. It was a stiff one. That fucking knee. <laughs> Jeez, <what's that? laughs> As per usual, Smash Wrestling impresses and makes me want to move in with James one day. <laughs> you have two extra beds. I'll see, America, so I'll see what I can do. I did have a laugh watching, uh, and I'm not going to tell you who I was in there, but I was very visible in the crowd in that um, one, so I was mostly somewhat chuckling at my own reactions to shit. Fair enough. I have a prediction that James has a beard. <laughs> uh, right now, I got a bit of a scruff, but not much. I think I might have been scruffing in that one, though. 50% 50, 50 of the fans visible there probably had a beard. I don't know. That would seem very Canadian to have a beard, I'm just saying. Don't know why. I'm just going to put that out there. Anyway. All right. You you do that. You do that, Ed. How are you for the main event? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Is there, is there anything specific about the schedule for a main event? Uh, well, it's a fight without honor, so I actually don't know if it's for one fall or not. <laughs> one fall! Some amount of of beating required before this match ends. Yes. With yes. honor! <laughs> yes, if you do not remember from the top of the show, this is ROH Final Battle 2010. Kevin Steen versus El Generico, the fight without honor, the finale of their rivalry, I believe, at least on ROH. I have not watched this. This is just a really great match that I really want to see again. I, I, I just knowing how legendary this feud was. Um, it says this was in the description. It was a year long feud. I could only surmise that there was. Well, actually, knowing, I feel like there might have been more matches, but also knowing what's at stake, I could certainly be wrong. Yes, uh, this match is actually either for El Generico's mask or Kevin Steen's Ring of Honor career. So I do not know the proper name of this, but it is a gambling match. I know there's a Spanish uh, translation for uh, Luchas de Asputas. I've probably pronounced the f fucking that like garbage, but <laughs> what James said. But yes, uh, this is scheduled for some sort of beating. So. If we are... <laughs> Y'all ready? I believe I am. Yep. All right. And on go. In three, two, one, go. Two of my favorite wrestlers ever. Yep. And I didn't even know about their indie days when I first saw them. I just instantly took a like. I mean, you can't, you can't not take a liking to Sami Zayn, at least back when he was a face. And why are you talking about Sami Zayn? Yeah, who oh, is that same? Yeah, you can't not like El Generico. I mean, he's he's working with the orphans now, doing God's work. Ole, 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 ole. I am a very big Kevin Owens fan, but this Kevin Steen guy, I'm not too sure about. He's got a pretty good. He's got a pretty good uh, rap song. Six second magic, yo. I feel like neither of you got that. that no, I know. <laughs> he actually did a, like a rap track with Six Seconds Magic. It's actually pretty good. Fair enough. I have to check that out later. I'll say that has got to be one of the most indie chants I've ever heard. Feud that's of the one, year. That's one of the most, I was, I was going to say that was one of the most indie shirts I've ever seen, but then I realized um, what it was. 
This is not some bullshit by Kevin Steed to try to shake his hand. After a year-long feud with the mask on the line and his career on the line. I like it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Haluva kick already. Was it actually called Haluva kick at this time? I don't, I don't think that was his finisher at this point. Also, yeah. I don't think that was a true Haluva kick. I do think they just called it a Mafia kick. Okay, yeah, kick. I, I, I always thought the Blue Thunder Bomb was a much was a much better finisher, to be honest. Well, I think at this, I think uh, Generico's finish was the Brain Buster. Oh, Brain Buster. Not to be confused with the Brain Buster, which he also does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is... <laughs> Need I remind you, these are the two men who started the Fight Forever chant, so... Oh, I, no, wait, that was that was Zay Nakamura, but they might as well have started it with the... With how good of a feud this is. Jane, uh, oh my God, Jesus! And this is how the match is starting. Yes, okay. that's what happens when you have a year-long feud. This should that's... be fun. <laughs> I'm already thoroughly enjoying myself. Well, you're certainly not the only one. Ow. Ooh, right across the eyes. Yakuza kick. <laughs> Thought there was something off there. I'm like mafia kick. I've never heard of that move. Not that I know a lot of moves. It's a great looking move, though. Whatever you call it. God, it's so weird to see generic. It's so weird to see generic with a completely black mask. Yeah, I'll give you that. What color does generic normally don? Normally, it's a black mask, but the, the little face part is red. It's got like a red design, yeah. Yeah, it's got a red design yeah. with the uh, black surrounded. Pretty much the same you shape. Can, you, can on, white would be red. you can see on his shirt right there. Come but, on, I mean, stop bleeding on the fans. One plus of having all, all the wrestlers wearing black and... Like their colors were black, red, and white. They're all they're both wearing black and white. The red, well, that's starting right now. Yeah, there is a lot of red coming off of Kevin Owens. Yeah. Kevin, sorry, I don't know who Owens is. <laughs> well, no, I'm pretty sure Kevin Steen became Kevin Owens, but I don't know what the hell happened to El Generico. He kind of just disappeared. The fans need to get the fuck out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Is Kevin just bleeding constantly over the fans? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Hey. No. Call it. <laughs> apron bomb? Oh, apron bomb. Okay. Yep. There we go. Something else. Funny enough, I feel like that won't be the last time that individual has that happen to him by that same individual. Yeah. What gives you that feeling? I mean, I don't doubt it'll be the first. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yes. What is he writing? Yeah. Oh. Mix it. 
You sick fuck. You sick fuck. You sick fuck. Always a fun one. One barricade cover wasn't enough. I had to use two of them. Two of them. Jesus. And that's what I that's what I haven't seen before, I gotta say. Yeah. A Superman, shirt a, red, a Superman shirt and a Red Lantern shirt next to each other. That's that's something. Oh. It's going to be a painful sentence, I think. Nope. Frog splash. Good, good choice. Good choice. That 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 that, that covers you a bit more. Just a bit more, a bit a bit less damage to yourself there, Kevin. Oh Jesus, that shot. <laughs> oh my gosh. Didn't work quite as well as he wanted it to, though. I didn't properly smear on there. <laughs> yeah, it was there though. Yeah. It was still it was still cool. <laughs> it was still cool. <laughs> just pushes that guy over and he, it looked like he almost it just looked like he collapsed. Well, I wasn't expecting anything else from this match. Oh, jeez. Oh, shit. That was, that looked brutal. I mean, hit a finger. Even, even with him looking out of the way. Well, that shows how old this was. There was a Nexus shirt. Uh, Nexus shirt, yep. Another apron bomb? Uh, I remember when the Nexus was cool. Yeah, that didn't even happen. I don't. The Nexus had so much potential, Austin. And WWE fucked it. Well, when I when, well, by, by the time I was watching wrestling, the core was gone. As yeah. was the Nexus. So, like, like I, I just, I will, I just always heard that it was good until it wasn't. So, nonetheless, yeah, we have a match right. going on. He just had a ladder thrown at Kevin Steen. I'll be honest, this ladder scares me because of the way the hinges are, the fact that they stick out. Ah, good old oh. indie wrestling ladders. Well, always safe. That wasn't super. Wow, that yeah, dude. The way he the way he looked out at the ladder, Jesus, that that really sold it. You know, the painting with it is a great spot, but I really can't tell what he's writing. No, can't at all. Oh, come on, Steen, you gotta win properly first. I don't think he gives a shit, Ed. I would agree. <laughs> Ow. But then again, they were once friends. <laughs> Why were they mentioning Colt Cabana? No idea. I know Carino had a big part oh, okay. in it. Right? I, I, I think I think what they're ta getting at is both of these guys were friends with other guys, and they kind of drifted apart because of those friendships with other guys. So it was Carino and Cabana. Like. Makes sense. Oh, 
I feel like that's not a bad thing, though. What? Not being the only person who knows what's going on in your own head. Well, the whole point is he's unpredictable. Yeah, also that was a very vicious pop-up power bomb, Which apparently was not this man's finisher. Either that or he just doesn't want to land it yet. No, this was not. Ooh, the dealing pin. Smug motherfucker. That's a chant that should be uh, chanted at wrestling shows. Smug motherfucker? Yeah. Ole, 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 ole. Was this the... I I know that... I, I feel like this wasn't the origin of that chant. Like, Al Generico wasn't the origin of that chant, but it was certainly... Early after that song. He certainly made it popular. I know it was his theme song. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure uh, football or soccer, as we call it in the states, does that. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, it was a football chant to start. I know that much. Austin, you having technical difficulties? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was just re- reconnecting for sake of. Okay. Do we need to do anything with the video, or are we still on? Oh, 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 everything's good. Everything's good. Okay, everything's cool. Good. cool. Nonetheless, it. he just did a cannonball sent on with a chair on the... Yeah, that was vicious as all hell. That chair just literally... Smacked. Oh, the chair is literally falling apart. <laughs> Windy chair. I hope there's like seven of you under the ring. He's got more. That's one thing I love. Wrestlers just being able to flip off the crowd. Oh, hey, this isn't the first time we've seen a rep uh, mask ripping spot. He's using the. He seems like he's always using the tass- The tassels are kind of getting away though, so it's covering it. That guy looks a bit familiar. Nah, not really. Yeah. I don't know. At one point, I did hear that he might have a twin. I think he looks a bit like a. He looks a bit like a skinny Seamus. <laughs> you know what? That's what it was. That's where I felt like that's that. Yeah, thanks, James. Ooh, that was Ooh. sick. Yeah. How have I not seen that spot before? Jeez. That could have been really bad if he fucked that up. That was impressive as all get out. Also, no offense to Kevin Steen, but no man his size should be able to effortlessly do a front flip like that with that much speed. Oh, he's using it as a puppet. Oh, the so humanity. That's your question about how the generic mask usually looks. <laughs> and that would explain why he has a different mask. Holy shit. <laughs> Doing the voice. I'm sorry. But... Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. Right into the dick. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect nothing less from Kevin Steen. Oh, shit. So much blood. Oh, 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 fuck. Yeah, you sick fucking deed. <laughs> I, I I hadn't seen a Kevin Steen match before this, but the man's reputation, somehow I am not surprised. Where is this man all my life? In hell. Does he still have the mask stuffed up his crotch? 
I feel like yeah. he, he stuffed up his he, he, and wiped his blood there. That's the whole. That's the whole. That's the whole point of it, though. It's. It, it, he's gonna pull it out later. He's a disgusting man. Ed, how did you like the answer to your question? What was the answer? Uh, where has this been, man been all my life? In hell. I did like that. <laughs> Although, to be honest, I don't think hell is enough for this man. <laughs> he was known as the Antichrist of wrestling, at least, in, at least according to him. Explain why he has Jeff a... Hardy's used that nickname as well. Okay. But I, I think that, that does fit, Kevin. You would explain why he has evil tattooed on his arm. Is he evil? Yes, he is. <laughs> that was a Judas reference. Ooh. Ooh it's on there, Bomb. Kind of blue fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a blue thunder bomb without that build out. Yes. That out. I'd call it a Samo I'd call it a bit kind of like a Samoan driver right there, though. It hurt. That's what I got from it. Certainly. Holy shit! These these look like we're fucking like we're like halfway through this match. <laughs> Barely halfway. Well, then I guess they're just going to have to get more violent. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That ladder's fucked up. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, could, I could use that for construction tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, God, right on the face. Well, I guess it is set for one fall. One fall. We do watch a lot of Canadian wrestling. Thanks, uh, James. Probably down to the sheer amount of smash. Oh, uh, yes. This is one of my favorite. Oh, yeah. He was going for the deep. What a heel. But, I mean, this is technically Canadian wrestling because there's two Canadians wrestling. Oh, okay. Can't even call it a ladder, ladder anymore. I would just say mangled thing of metal. Oh, God fucking damn it. Damn. There's blood from the ladder. Well, I mean, where isn't their blood at this point? I already knew Kevin Owens was on my list of best, best, um, best faces in wrestling because he can just, uh, I don't know, you know, like Adam Cole, he's got some great reaction faces, but oh, is that way? <laughs> as is Kevin Owens now, but. Yeah. Table, ladder, where's the chair? Oh, I love the right now. Now. I do always enjoy Kevin's creative setups. He does some. Oh, shit. Jesus. That was awesome. Holy God. Holy God. That was perfect. Yes.
how is anybody going through that setup and how are they still alive if they've gone through that? Also, I agree with the crowd. This is very awesome. That it is. Oh. Super kick. Nice. Austin is gone and back again. But more technical difficulties. Just Discord. Oh, there. I came back just in time for... Oh. Yeah, do we need to pause the video? Oh. Goodbye, no, no. Chair. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Cool. Making sure. I think they meant the brain buster. No, nope, no, nope, that was just a brain buster. Oh, that the was brain a, a different move. Okay. You'll I probably guess, do it at some point. I, I guess I have the wrong. I, I, I definitely thought brain buster was something else, but I guess that's the brain buster. You'll see it. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm used to a different kind of brain buster. I guess. I well, that like was a brain might- buster. It just wasn't the brain buster. Yeah, I'm just used to a different type of brain buster, is what I'm saying. Fair enough. You could possibly be thinking of a muscle buster, maybe. This ain't going good. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh the eye poke! The eye poke! Oh, oh, oh. That can't stop El Banderico! Oh, <laughs> Through the table, off the mangled piece of metal. Fuck. Oh, fucking That's god! Right, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, we can mostly see El Generico's face, but who is that man underneath that mask? It's not important, and that's El Generico. If I've ever seen him. Just a generic wrestler who's actually very good at the wrestling. I don't know what else you'd expect, my friend. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dreamers. <laughs> it's perfect how it just dropped off, though. Uh, Steam, I've been trying to remove him. He swept out of here. Oh, oh hey. He's still in the finisher. On to the confetti! <laughs> no, two, no. With the way the mask is ripped, it kind of looks like his nose might be slightly broken. Maybe. These two have amazing chemistry though together. Well, you wouldn't expect anything less. 2002? It was 2010, so eight years before this would be 2002 when they met. So to clarify about the Brain Buster bit, I always thought... Oh, that's New Karina. So it's possible I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure specifically the top rope one he does onto a turnbuckle is the brain buster. I, I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Uh, I always thought a brain buster was kind of a vertical suplex type thing where they lift him up in the air and then they and then they drop him on their head. It yeah. is. Uh, not what he did. Okay. I mean, so he anyway. may not have got him like perfectly vertical, but that's. So anyway, Steve Carino started blasting. Yeah, yeah says he did. Oh, here's the band. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom. Cool. Hell yes! Thank you, Cabana. Dude, that that never happens. That's that was a very that was a very refreshing 
change uh, change in the cliche. You always see the cliche where heel comes in with the chair ready to bust him up. Face comes in, stops him from using the chair, throws the chair out of the ring. There, Cole Cabana actually realized this was a fight without this is a fight without without honor match, and got in and did what he had to do. Yeah. Oh, foreshadowing. There I go. Oh, fucking Jesus, Ralph. That was a hell of a bump. Yeah. I don't know why he waited until the ref was down in order to kick him in the dick. Oh, hey, Mike Resberg. Mike Resberg. Oh, yeah. Two. <laughs> Are those chairs plastic? Probably yeah, like so. black ones, anyway. Yeah, yeah that, that's why the other one was. Fucking die for real nice. Oh, fucking Jesus, hell. I didn't even give all the way. No. This guy also looked familiar as a referee. Oh, dude, I can't tell which expression I like more. I, that last one, definitely. That, that last one was good. The blood and the the blood and the beard and oh. Uh. God, and, and that's horrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> have a sense of rhythm, my friend. I have no rhythm. I'm tone deaf. <laughs> you ain't got rhythm? No. We are not doing love handle right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get the band back together right now. There's a match happening. Do that later. <laughs> Stop, Ed. I mean, it's you not even some of the things for their lives. What was that shout? Oh, is he? Oh, he was going for the yeah. <laughs> On the exposed Why did the turnbuckle pad get removed. Yeah. It's been gone for a while. Oh, here it is. The Brain Buster. Brain Buster. Brain Buster! That was incredible, yo. If he would have done it out of the other train box, oh, he would be dead. Whoop, we keep losing Austin. Hello, Austin. He's back. One more time. Whoop, we lost Austin again. Oh boy. I I don't I don't know if we should stop or not. Well, mine just paused. Okay, we're paused. We're we're unfortunately paused. What looks to be at the end, unfortunately. God damn it. We're almost Austin. there. Anyways, Austin. Give me a moment. You all right? We apologize for the technical difficulties at the very conclusion of this match. Well, that happens. Unfortunate timing on this.
Austin. Austin. How you doing, man? Oh, there we go. Sorry, technical difficulties. Yeah, we... No worries, we, it happens. Uh, where are you at? 3041. 3041. Okay. Right, 3041. Good, someone counts down for all there. Uh, I'm there. Three, two, one. And let's see how this ends. Is there blood written on that? Yeah, there is. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Why do the fans always cheer for them to do it? Like, I, I understand. But there it is. There, 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 there's the yes. Saving it for later. He's for the mask, damn it. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> that was incredible. That was great. What a match. God damn. Holy fuck. That was... As expected, excellent. Yeah, I, I think this is definitely up there as one of the greatest rivalries ever. Like not just because of what would happen between the two, not characters but wrestlers, throughout the rest of their careers, especially in WWE, but. Such America a was WWE. Not the, okay, yeah, 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 whatever. It's it's such a good feud. Like it, it works on so many levels. Very enjoyable match, and the entire feud, even though I did not watch the entire thing, is legendary in wrestling lore. I was. It true. I mean, I know there's plenty of tag team breakups. Like that were the lead off to legendary feuds, but like this one, and like this really comes to mind as like the precursor to uh Champa Gargano as this uh, incredible, like, incredibly violent kind of feud where both guys have nothing left and are just fighting. Yeah, and there's even more from these guys, which I should find. <laughs> yes, yeah. so very, very good. I, I am. Go ahead, Austin. No, go ahead, Ed. No, no, no. I'm inviting you first. All right. I really appreciated. I really appreciated um how a Generico just was fighting to win and like realized the stipulation and stuff. Like that's something they kind of they kind of I kind of noticed that in like the that the, the again this is comparing uh. They did the same sort of thing in the Champa Gargano feud, and Gargano just got pre- proceedingly and proceedingly more like obsessed with beating Champa and like getting more hardcore. I don't know. I think it always adds to something when you take a, char- a character like El Generico or Johnny Gargano and get and they have to go to the most extreme lengths. Like, I mean, especially at the end. That was. Absolutely. Yeah. Very much. Perfect mix of subversion and storytelling. It was honestly an incredible match. Um, I don't have much to add. I feel like you've you've said it. Yeah, I feel like... not much more to add. To be honest, for me. Sorry, Ed. This was your match. I didn't have much more to add. It's just a very 
great match to watch. Even going That's back. That's not a complaint. It's just that you put it very well, yeah. Austin. <laughs> um, also, another thing. So, something I always wanted to see was was uh, because Sami Zayn was a heel, and Kevin Joe always was the heel in WWE, especially on the on the main roster for the longest time until they eventually turned him face. I really wanted to see Kevin Owens versus uh, versus Sami Zayn um, at, with Kevin Owens that face and uh, Sami Zayn as the heel. I mean, obviously, Sami Zayn and leans towards face and Kevin Owens leans towards heel, but it's always interesting when you put the dynamic. Obviously, that is completely unrelated to this match. I mean, I was gonna ask, I would love to see that match flipped, like you said, but Kevin Owens and Kevin Steen, sure, they're the same person, just different last name, but El Generico. It would also be amazing to see El Generico in WWE, but I believe he went back to Mexico to help the orphans. Yeah. Wasn't he dead? No, he's in Mexico helping the orphans. Come on, man. That, that's actually very positive to hear. I'm glad he's still alive and doing well for himself and for the world. I need to check up on this again because I've heard conflicting stories. <laughs> We're being a dead horse here. <laughs> okay, yeah. It's not even like it's a new joke. It's such an old fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably more than likely beating a dead Kevin Steen from what we just watched. Uh, rip. Dead Adam Cole. Might actually be a dead Adam Cole. I'm so confused now, Ed. I'm beating another dead horse over here. <laughs> How many dead horses are there? Let's Mafia has a trademark car- calling card, you know? You, you gotta just keep solving horses. They don't go all to the glue factory. Some gotta be heads inside of a pillowcase, you know? <laughs> okay. I, 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 think this, I think this is done. This is done, Dad. <laughs> we, well, the jokes have gotten dark and stupid, so let's head over to the dark match, why don't we? Dark match? Ah. Oh, wait. Segue. We gotta... wait. Wait, you, you pressed the segue button too early. I was going to mention, mention how Sami Zayn got stripped of the Intercontinental title and how W... It's yeah, what does Sami Zayn have to do with El Generico, though? <laughs> All right. In the dark match. <laughs> at the brief tangent. <laughs> at the brief tangent before we start the dark match, Sami Zayn got stripped of the Intercontinental title. Bullshit. Yeah, absolutely bullshit. Uh, I would agree with that. Yeah, I think it's bu- I think it's bullshit, especially. It's, it's yeah, I think it's bullshit. But I also they said no one would lose their spot, no one lose their push. Anyway, I hope he comes back from uh, the virus, just huddling up like the rest of us with his Intercontinental Championship and cl- declares himself the true champion. Because that's like, what. Why don't, like, why don't they just do the same thing they were doing? With the cruiserweight title and crown a fucking interim interim champion. If yeah. Someone maybe, they are, like, maybe they maybe they are doing that, but not as obvious. So they well, don't not for do the same shit like they did with uh uh what Absolution and Riot Squad where they were just the well, same stuff kind of. Well, they and well both WWE and Sami Zayn have made it very clear that he was stripped of the title. Like WWE on Fox Street, who do you want to be the new Intercontinental Champion? And they treat like both have made it very clear that it's vacant. It was vacant. So yeah, but maybe they're doing because they have the interim champion for the cruiserweight title. But maybe they want to make it less obvious that they're going to keep the title on Sami Zayn. So they're making it so it's vacated, but I'll come back as the true champion, and we'll have that kind of storyline once he actually does come back to work. Maybe. Giving them a slight yeah, bit of this stuff, Ed. Ed, you, you confuse me to no end. That's my job. Anyways, on to the dark match. <laughs> this one comes by James. James, take it away before he, Austin and I try to kill each other. This is what happens when we're up, up past our bedtimes. James is fine. He, he's going to be up past five. <laughs> 
that said, the dark match for this episode is the worst wrestling t-shirt design. Um, not counting Jordan Miles. Anyway. Unless one of you picked Jordan Miles, in which case, yeah, that's a fair point. I do. It's a good contender, though. Yes, it is. I just went in a slightly lighter direction. I think it's easy to understand what this concept is. Just what was the shittest t-shirt design? So, I'm going to link the, my option to you guys, and it's the infamous Sin Cara shirt. Ah, uh, oof. I say, when you see it, you see it. Oof. The, uh, you both see it. I'll give you a few seconds if you haven't seen it yet, but let, let me know when yeah, you see I, it. I've seen I see it. it. I see it. Uh, yeah. Austin. Yeah. <laughs> So they accidentally gave Sin Cara a dick. <laughs> That's what I put it. Just, it's exactly what it is. And since there might be some people listening to it not looking at the image, I'm just going to. I guess it'll probably be on the video. But in case they're watching, <laughs> I'm just going to put it bluntly. They accidentally put a dick in the design. And so uh, I believe not, the shirt got recalled not long afterwards. <laughs> not, not to mention. Not to mention that he, 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 he it's like dripping, like the, the design of the shirt. Uh, it's so bad. Yeah, Ooh. which would be fine if there wasn't a dick. Yeah, that's not good. Like there are some that are just terrible ideas, and then there are some that it's perfectly fine idea. I guess a picture of, um, Sin Cara, and then they somehow accidentally put a dick on it, and I'm not. How did nobody see that while taking that photo, looking at the design before putting it out there? Why did no one go, dude, this kind of looks like that. Like, you know the internet's going to take over, right? <laughs> yeah. That was very horrible, James. Jesus. <laughs> so that's my it's pick. Legend. It's legendary in its badness. And uh, good on, good on uh, James for picking this category because you know that was my pick that was my pick as well <laughs> like but james gets to go first so there i left choices with, though at least yeah there's don't worry there is plenty of bad wrestling shirts to go around i feel my pick is very tame compared to what i've just seen my particular pick again it can't it it's it, it it can't beat that. Like truly is it truly is the Enzo Amore of uh, bad shirts. I meant that in the you can't teach that kind of way, but it could be taken as other directions. Yeah, that's where we said that's we were awful. going. <laughs> Anyways, uh, enough stalling. My pick is more that. Instead of being something that went unnoticed and is horrifying, mine is something they definitely noticed and is still pretty horrifying in a different way. It is the now watch me hit, now watch me bray bray shirt. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. <laughs> Whose idea was this? I mean, <laughs> I may have thrown up a little bit in my mouth. <laughs> who, who wanted this? Who? How, how, how do you mean this cult leader to do a 12-year-old dance? What the fuck? There's also... This This what I did pick this one. But there's also the... Okay, so these were allegedly canceled shirts. That, that, that might change things. But, but, but let me check. I did not do enough research for this episode because mine does not even come anywhere. I didn't. I just. I didn't think we would need that much research. Search. And yeah, you could have literally just Google limit searched terrible wrestling shirts. Well, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna assume this was a shirt, or at least a planned shirt. There's also a planned shirt that was hashtag squad goals with the white family. Oh, 
<sighs> but nonetheless, this is horrible in a different way to James is. James is, it's something they didn't realize, had to recall, and just looks terrible. That said, I do need to agree that it is hilariously bad when WWE tries to show how hip with the youth they are. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention, this, like, this is the obvious bit, but like, it doesn't fit him at all. But they thought, hey, let's let's put this on Bray. I mean, I guess it kind of worked because I imagine at the time they were scheming this, Bray was a joke. So... <laughs> But nonetheless, that's my pick. It's a bad shirt. <laughs> yeah, that is not good. Uh, yeah, not much more to say about that one. Uh, but my pick, uh, I've definitely lost this uh, vote. That's for damn sure. Uh, my pick is this uh, Boogeyman t-shirt. And I just really hate the design of the face on this shirt. It, I know he's the boogeyman. And he's supposed to look terrifying, but I, this face does not invoke terror in the way they want it for me, at least. The, the <laughs> gap. I I'm not sure who was afraid of the boogeyman of the boogeyman, the wrestler. Really, so. <laughs> I'm also unsure if he has a little black spot normally on his lip or if there's a gap in his bottom lip and teeth, but that's also a problem on the shirt. Uh, I do. I do. Like a black tongue sticking out, I think. I do like, I, I like the, I think my, what I like about this shirt, the one thing I could say I like about this shirt is uh, it kind of looks like one of those, uh, those drawings that psychologists show where if you look at it, it it's two faces or it's one face. Yeah, the, uh, that, uh, uh, us. I think yeah. that's the whole thing, the whole point of the black spot in the middle because it kind of looks like two faces smiling at each other. Again. But yeah, it's, a, it's not a great design. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an ugly design. I'll give you that. I don't, I don't love it. <laughs> It's not oh, the worst you've ever seen, but it's not good. I'll, I'll give you that. I at least picked a picture. <laughs> yeah. It feels the most in character with who the wrestler is. Yeah, but I would not buy that shirt, even if I was a huge Boogeyman fan. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. I'm just saying. He has a few more that are better. There's a lot more. I'm oh, sorry. I had nothing more to add to that. Go ahead. Yeah, quick honorable mention from me. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. The old TNA AJ Styles shirt. Oh, yeah, it looks like a cum stain. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yes. You can tell by his face, he's like, this doesn't look good at all. All I'm saying is, there's a lot, there's a lot more, there's a lot less space but there's a lot more similarity between the Boogeyman and some weird ass Boogeyman face design than Ray and Watch Me Hit, Watch Me Nay Nay and Sin Cara and a dick. Well, it actually depends on which person is behind the Sin Cara mask. He actually can be a, quite a big dick. Fair enough. I, I think the uh, bracer is the only one that's really out of context here. Yeah, AJ Styles has the whole Claire Lynch thing, so I guess that could work for his t-shirt design. Yikes. I didn't realize it was going to be this dark of a match. <laughs> well, at least the dark match. Another, another uh, honorable mention. That's just a product of the 90s. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I especially love the bar and grill bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the always pounding ass bar and grill. <laughs> that, that um, with APA. Yeah, we, yeah. We, 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 come on, James. They, they can look up, they can look up bad wrestling t shirt designs online. 
Uh, I also just sent the uh, the Rikishi one. <laughs> That's Rikishi. That, that one's actually very on brand. It suits Rikishi. Just who's gonna wear that? <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only thing I would probably never wear that. It's funny. Like that. Oh, that would be a good punishment for like a prediction instead. Wear the Rikishi back that ass up. <laughs> sure. I tried to pick up your uh, selective uh, gender. Whatever you prefer. Anyways, that's the dark match. <laughs> not one, not two, but three terrible shirt designs for your next wrestling themed punishment. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Yep, they're pretty crap. <laughs> well, besides that uh, terrifying uh, dark match, I feel like this might have been one of our best shows ever. Perfectly well-rounded, as all things should be. You really have to say well-rounded while we're all looking at a picture of Kishi's ass. Thanks! <laughs> th th thanks! I I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. I just want to say... <laughs> J J J James is the one who put that sh that picture up. Play uh, PM. Thank you for not being so hard at that, James. That was such a terrible joke. So, so without further ado, <laughs> thank you for watching the Card Subject to Change podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have a good night. Please remember, the card is always subject to change. What are what what is that? Are we I like just know your gimmick? Suck it. <laughs> Sorry, love you. Ah, oh, you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> are you ready? Uh, you, ready you, know, you ready for some poutine? <laughs> Okay, we're just killing time at this point. <laughs> I think we've just started okay. saying things. <laughs> Bye!